Another Trump cabinet member has been confronted at a restaurant, this time a mother carrying her toddler, called out and battled EPA's Chief Scott Pruitt during lunch yesterday, calling on him to step down. Take a look. Hi. Um, I just wanted to urge you to resign. Um, you're doing the environment. This is my son. He loves animals. He loves clean air. He loves clean water. We deserve to have somebody at the EPA who actually does protect our environment. Somebody who believes in climate change and keeps it seriously for the benefit of all of us, including our children. Um, so I would urge you to resign before your scandals push you out. School teacher Kristen Mink says Pruitt did not respond and left the restaurant. The incident comes as the Washington Post reports two of Pruitt's top aides provided new details to congressional investigators on some of his most controversial spending and management decisions. A reminder here for those of you who have not been keeping track at home, there are now at least 15 ongoing investigations into the EPA head's questionable questionable behavior. Those 15, by the way, some internal, some external, uh, but 15 total. Mac McClarty, former White House Chief of Staff for President Clinton. Currently, he is chairman of McClarty Associates. Mac, always good to have you, sir. Greg, my pleasure. So this article includes revelations of Pruitt asking aides to, to seek a job with a $200,000 salary for his wife and help in the job search as well. Uh, also, apparently, at one point, asking staffers to put hotel reservations on their personal credit cards. There are also reports that Pruitt and his aides maintained secret calendars in order to prevent controversial meetings or calls from getting out to the public. With, with the testimony now on the record from these former aides, Mac, are, are the walls starting to close in on Scott Pruitt? Well, they may be, Craig. I mean, it's the old adage where there's smoke, there may be fire, and allegations are allegations. They need to be proven facts. But you, you went through the litany and the introduction. Uh, we've had this ongoing in terms of Administrator Pruitt's conduct, and I must say I'm surprised because he's been in public life. He's been Attorney General of Oklahoma. He was head of the Republican Attorney General's Association. So he should well understand that there is a clear line, a clear line between public responsibility and duty and private business. And you just have to uh, honor that. And of course, President Trump came to office with drain the swamp and so forth. And people can understand cronyism and they don't like it. And that's what uh, some of this may, may be. Again, I don't want to prejudge, but there's just been too much, too much controversy. $3 million spent on a, a security detail, purchase of a $43,000 soundproof office phone booth, uh, tasking aides to purchase a a used mattress form at a Trump hotel. No one has provided any explanation about why anyone, forget the EPA chief, but would want a used mattress from his boss's hotel. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's just part of the list. This is what the president said about his EPA chief last month. Well, Scott Pruitt is doing a great job within the walls of the EPA. I mean, we're setting records. Uh, outside, he's being attacked very viciously by the press. And I'm not saying that he's blameless. But we'll see what happens. I mean, a bit of a contradiction there. I'm not saying yeah. that he's blameless, but, yeah. you know, the press is so, so vicious. Well, I think, Craig, what it shows is these kind of uh, episode situations take away from what the president is trying to do in terms of his policies. Now, in terms of the deregulation, he, he ran on that. I think we, we may overdo it one way or the other on some of these matters, but that's the real uh, point. It takes away from what the president is trying to accomplish, and he indicated that in those comments. Hey, Mac, shifting gears here really quickly, Chief of Staff uh, to the President, John Kelly, there are uh, reports now that, that uh, he is on his way out, reported that he's leaving his post, although the White House has called rumors of, of Kelly's departure fake news. Um, Like-minded hmm. aides, Mick Mulvaney, uh, VP, Chief of Staff, Nick Ayers, they've been considered also word that he's adding Bill Shine as Deputy Chief of Staff. What, what does all of this mean moving forward? More chaos, less chaos, perhaps? This president and this White House have had uh, just an unprecedented amount of change and, and turnover at the cabinet, the White House level. It's hard to get stability and really move your agenda forward. Uh, General Kelly, uh, I think, uh, has gotten frustrated at times. He's expressed that. Uh, we'll see how all of this plays out. The truth is President Trump in many ways operates, Craig, without a chief of staff. That's the way he did in the private sector. But being president of the United States, being in government, 
uh, is just very, very different landscape. Uh, so, you know, he's already had uh, so many changes in the White House. You have to get stability. We had our challenges getting started, but we did achieve that stability, and President Clinton got his legislation passed that first year, and his approval rating reflected that. And remember, this president's going right into these midterms with the Republicans uh, on the bubble, both in the House and the Senate. Mac McClarty, former White House Chief of Staff. Mac, thank you, sir. Enjoy the holiday. You too, Craig. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.